Okay, so finally, let's generalize the work energy theorem in higher dimensions. So up, to, up until now, we've seen the work energy theorem in one dimension. Let's see what happens in two or three dimensions. So as always, we start with Newton's second law. So Newton's second law of motion in vector form. Um, which states that m times the derivative of velocity with respect to time is equal to the force applied on the system. Right, and we saw earlier what this means. This means that for every point with position vector r, this assigns the force applied to that point. So, what do we do? Well, we saw that earlier we integrated with uh, respect to position. However, here we have vectors. And vectors don't quite work as scalars in one dimension. So what do we do? Uh, we have velocity here. We take the cross product, uh, the dot product with delta r. All right, so we're considering a small change in the position of the particle and we're going to see what happens all right so f of r time times delta r okay and we're throughout this whole derivation we're going to assume that delta r is infinitesimally small so that this f of r remains constant okay so delta r approaches to zero so that f of r is constant. Okay. Note. So we've, value, we've taken the dot product with delta r. Now what can we do? Remember again from kinematics that delta r is equal to v times delta r t. So I'm going to rewrite this part right here. So I get m dv dt dot product v delta t equals f r dot product delta r. Okay, now what do we do? Again, remember that this right here is equal to the time derivative of one half v times v. Okay, or in other words, this is equal to the time derivative of the magnitude of the velocity vector squared. Okay, and you can check this uh, using vector calculus, very simple. So we get that m d dt of one half v squared delta t is equal to f of r times delta r. And let's just draw a visual to understand what this means, all right? What does this mean? Uh, what is this? What are we doing in this derivation? So uh, let's draw our axes, okay? So here we have whoops. Okay, nope. Then okay. So here we have our axes and we draw our trajectory. Okay, so this is the path taken by the particle, we're, called, we're going to call it C, as we'll see later on, and we have that at a certain position, okay, so here, this is R, and this is R plus delta R, okay, so this vector right here is going to be the delta R, Okay, so this is delta r. 
And let's say that the force acting on the particle at that point right here um, is F. Okay, and remember we've taken an infinitesimally small interval, so we're going to assume that the force is constant. Okay, so this is the force acting, and the angle between these is theta. Okay, great. So here what we've done is we've taken this segment of the overall uh, trajectory of the particle. We've seen, we've taken the dot product of the force with respect to this delta r, which shows uh, the direction in which the particle is moving. And what we're going to do now is we're going to sum Okay, so this, we're going to say, okay, this are the components for a segment J. Okay, so for a segment J, okay, now what we do is we sum over all of the contributions uh, of each infinitesimal segment along C. So essentially, we're going to take the sum of all of these contributions and we're going to take the limit as delta rj approaches zero so we're going to take the integral of these so we have the integral of m d dt one half v squared dt equals the integral of f of r times dr what are our limits of integration. So here we're integrating over time. So we're going to just say ta and tb. And what does that mean? It means that the time at which the particle is at this initial position here is ta. And the time at which the, the particle is, it, is at its final position here is tb. The corresponding limits, if we consider the vector positions, are going to be ra and rb. But we're taking vectors as our limits of integration, which is quite weird. Um, essentially, this is what mathematicians call a line integral. So we're essentially integrating over a curve, a curve um, which is the trajectory C, okay, which is normally denoted as this. So integrating over the curve from Ra to Rb, uh, which we denote C, and we're taking the integral of f of r dot product dr. Good. Um, so how does this um, simplify? So this part we have already simplified in our earlier derivation in one dimension. This is just one half m of vb squared minus one half m of va squared. And this is equal to the integral along the path c of f times dr. And this is the work energy theorem in the higher dimensions. Again, you can notice that the components are quite similar. This is exactly the same, it's the change in kinetic energy and this which has slightly changed is the work done by F in moving the particle along C. C. And we're going to take a couple of videos to explain what this really means because it is very ambiguous taking the integral along a path of a dot product what okay so in, in the next videos we'll look at what work is in three dimensions and give a couple examples so this is the work energy theorem in its generality All right.